Hello, everybody. Uh, how is it going? Okay. Um, how does the clicker work? So it's like this. No? Yay. Okay. I'm going to uh, quickly uh, teach you how to pronounce my, my name. Uh, <laughs> so it's Senia. Imagine the J is Y. And if you uh, have a hard time remembering things, uh, uh, I am not the tea person, Sencha, but a <laughs> coffee person. Uh, like Kenya, because Kenya produces like wonderful <laughs> coffee. <laughs> so Senya, not Senja. Um, okay, um, who am I? Um, I was, uh, I'm a knitter, first of all. I could knit before I could uh, read or write. So that, uh, that's the most important thing. Um, uh, I also do sewing. I sew most of my own clothes. However, today I'm not wearing anything me made. Um, and in my day job, which pays the, the uh, expensive and fancy hobbies, uh, I develop software. Um, last but not least, I'm also an e-textile advocate. So I tell people about electronic textiles because this topic has brought so much joy to my life and I want to pass that onwards. Um, uh, and it's a totally self-appointed position. Nobody's paying anything for it, but, but for the love of sharing, um, uh, that's, that's what I do. Um, and I quickly want to sh uh, share like how I got into electronic textiles. And um, um, <laughs> I have a friend, a very good friend of mine, uh, who is also a maker. He makes uh, home automation stuff. And uh, we've been hacking together some stuff. And uh, one, one year, he gave me a learn to solder kit um, uh, for my birthday. And um, uh, he, he used to sort of like then uh, ask me a lot of times like, hey, did you start soldering yet? And is it, is it ready yet? Um, but since the kit was something, you know, this is so embarrassing, I don't even remember what it made. This is how uninterested I was in, in the end product. So therefore, I cannot have a, a photo of, the, of that kit. And also, it's maybe good because I know that there might be somebody who designed that kit. But I wish, I wish that the, the, the kit had been something... Uh, oh, sorry. No, I have I have slides uh, in uh, opposite opposite uh, uh, order. Um, let's go through this one and then get back to the soldering kit story. Okay. Um, um, if you don't know what electronic textiles are, uh, they consist of textile part. Uh, can be made of yarn, uh, fiber, uh, roving, anything anything soft and squishy. Um, the technique that uh, they can be made with can be knitted, sewn, crocheted. Felted, embroidered, woven. There's so many that um, couldn't fit into the slide. Uh, the end product can be like clothes, accessories, um, any other type of wearables, uh, but also uh, home decor or kitchen appliances, uh, anything that uh, looks nice on your wall. Um, also, toys and puzzles, something that kids play around with. Uh, <laughs> or last but not least, tools. Uh, either to help you make some other stuff or that it could be like assistive technology to help you navigate the world uh, around you. Then the electronic part has to have <laughs> some electronics embedded in them. Um, and uh, usually the components are soft, lightweight, uh, non-scratchy, non-angular, because um, when they are attached to soft material, it doesn't make sense to have like heavy or angular or scratchy things that then harm the textile that they are embedded into. And um, um, some of the circuit parts are usually removable, at least the battery, uh, but they're also um, like completely removable circuits uh, from, from the item because like when it's a textile and if it's being used as a clothing or something that you touch, there's usually a lot of dirt and um, stuff that needs to be washed off. Um, the actual components, they can be sensors, uh, lights, uh, something that produces motion, sound, heat, um, and um, they can make something um, so advanced as uh, data collection or even like in the moment machine learning. Okay, <laughs> now we come back to the solar kit, sorry. So my friend had given the kit to me. Um, I was uninterested in it, and I wished that there was something uh, as cool as this, um, uh, but it wasn't. And um, maybe five years go by, and he sort of start, stops asking me, how is the soldering going? Okay, so he has given up. Um, 
and then uh, one day on on the interwebs, I I find this beautiful, beautiful umbrella and a tutorial, and then the fireworks start. Like I was like, where is that kit? I need to start solving right now. Where is it? And then uh, <laughs> my friends were like, okay, okay, let me show you how how this works. Um, and I got into soldering. Woo. Um, in the process of reading about the the umbrella uh, and other fancy looking stuff, I found out that there are the components uh, that are you know sewable, washable, lightweight that make uh, electronic textiles. And I was like, oh, amazing. And I called my friend asking him like, um, you know that I'm a knitter and a sewist and I make stuff. Um, did you know that these kind of components exist? And he was like, yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I knew. And I asked, like, you didn't think to mention this to me? <laughs> to me? Because, okay, we have made stuff together. We have traveled around the world together. We have lived together for 15 years. We have been married for o almost 10 years. <laughs> and you did not think to tell me? And... <clears throat> We had a discussion about what things are important in life, uh, <laughs> but we are still married and together. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and that's how I started making these things, uh, and uh, this is this is lovely. But I'm here to talk about the certification and and the project that I wish that the rest of you uh, uh, would would certify or make. Um, so, uh, by a raise of hands, who has heard of certification? Wonderful, almost everybody, yes. Um, who has actually certified, oh, sure, certified something, wonderful. But we need, we need more hands for this um, question. So um, I had the thought last year that, um, you know, I kind of, kind of would like to certify some of my projects, but I have them on social media. That's like the, the, the default way of sharing things, right? How many else think that because their projects are on social media, that's sort of enough for the sharing part? Does anybody dare to sort of say this? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, and um, I, I, I will sell you uh, out of this idea. So I will sell you the certification, why, why it's maybe not enough uh, to have your projects on social media. Um, but before we, um, or what, what brings um, me to that point is that, um, Insurance is something that you do for, for the important things that you, you value, like your car, your uh, house, your maybe like life insurance, <laughs> important things. Um, so um, even though there are not like insurance packages for your hardware projects, um, you still do insurance-like measures for those projects. Um, um, so if you think about what kind of steps you have taken um, to insure your projects, or insure, um, you maybe have like physical copies on a disk somewhere, or in the cloud, or when you're um, making them, um, you might choose um, stuff that is sort of easy to share. Like maybe um, you don't use the uh, PSD format because you might, you or somebody else in the future might not have access to Photoshop, so um, you use SVG format instead because it's more easy to share. And I think. Social media also is one way to sort of, you know, you're, you're ensuring that um, it's it's findable. People can bookmark it. People can share it. Um, so it it kind of works. Um, who uses social media for hardware projects? Like shares something about them online. Wonderful. Um, and um, there's so many social media platforms uh, that you can use for this. Uh, here are some who happen to be also the sponsors of this event. So let's give a hand. Thank you for sponsoring the event. And these are just some, if there's a sponsor who also has some social uh, media-like features on their platform. Um, I made this slide, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't know, but here's just some examples. Um, and um, um, it's wonderful that there are so many. And up until last year's, um, is it October maybe? I wouldn't have been made aware that um, you know social media is somehow sort of risky or missing some some stuff that the certification sort of, in in my opinion, in, ensures that 
your projects are more shareable. And enter <laughs> the, this use case. So um, since the social media platforms are, are, are owned by the companies, um, they're, they're, you know, of course, they're under the control of the companies. And companies, they can, they can change the terms of their service. Somebody can buy them suddenly and then make a huge change. And then suddenly a platform that we all relied on um, is, not, is not something that it used to be. Um, so up until <laughs> last fall, uh, I was thinking like, okay, it's enough. It's enough that I have uh, my stuff on Instagram or Twitter. Um, but nowadays I think that it's not enough. Uh, so I should certify my projects and you should too. Um, who would like to ensure that their projects are shareable in the future? Yes, everybody. Wonderful. So please certify, look, look into the, um, into the certification process. I've heard that it's really, really easy um, to do. Um, and when I was considering certifying my projects, uh, I of course went to the project listing to see like what kind of stuff people have certified already. And I was expecting um, hundreds of thousands of projects. Unfortunately, I was let down. There are only some hundreds. Um, um, I don't know what is the current number because I'm hoping that the numbers are going up every day. Um, and uh, I browse different things and um, I, I realized that I, I know that there are amazing projects in the world that have been already made um, because I see them on social media. Why aren't they here? Why aren't they here? Uh, and I started making this list like I wish that there was, there was something like this. Um, and now I realized you know, this week that I actually, the topic of my talk should have been like uh, 10 types of e-textile projects that I wish were certified because these are not, these are just like examples of different categories, not, not very specific like project items. But let's go, countdown, one of 10. Considering my background I, <laughs> with, with soldering and the non-interesting um, soldering kits, I wish that there were more stuff um, that is, you know, teaches folks how to solder and looks cute and interesting. It can be also something useful, but I wish it was more visually appealing uh, and, and cute. Um, and there happens to be at least one uh, <laughs> soldering kit that looks very nice, um, and it's the penguin badge. Um, but there's room for more, like um, whatever it is, if, if it is a flower or um, something, something else that you find appealing, uh, please make a badge and, and like, like a badge kit and, and certify that. Um, number two, I wish <laughs> that there were more projects that are made mostly out of yarn or fabric, um, because I have to say up until last year's summit, I was like kind of, is yarn hardware? Is yarn hardware? And last year, <laughs> there was a speaker, Anuradha, uh, who, who proved to all of us that yarn is hardware, definitely. So, woo. Um, more yarn and fabric things, please. Number three, uh, something that contains flexible components or are flexible components. And to already today, we have seen one example or more actually um, examples of uh, flexible components. So we need we need stuff like this because the even though the the PCB sewable components they are they are wonderful. They don't fit to all the places because, for example, if if we're making making like clothing with um, with electronics, we have much more sort of like uh, curvy surfaces rather than angular straight ones. So, yeah. Um, I wish that there were more uh, more projects that use a niche textile technique. Um, and yeah, I could have ten slides. Of uh, these, but for example, something like bobbin lace. I have no idea. Have you heard of this? But I used to do this. So I, I learned knitting, and then I learned bobbin lace. So when I was ten years old, I was making this stuff, um, and I I would love to embed some electronics in 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 one. Okay. Another technique is called tatting, and it, this is even tinier, teeny tiny lace um, made with usually two different uh, threads or yarns, um, and what is really interesting about this is that um, uh, the other uh, yarn is like inside the other one. So it's like great insulation 
um, technique already. Uh, so we could like use use conductive thread that is not insulated and then tether around it, so to speak. But there isn't there isn't a project on the on the certified listing that would would be using these kinds of techniques. So go ahead, make some. Number five, something uh, that is an existive, uh, assistive technology device. And I found at least one. So this is a Cara loop um, that um, is an uh, input, input device. And you put it on your head. And with your facial movements, you give inputs to whatever the, the device, computer, mobile phone, um, that you want to give those inputs to. Um, and to give you existing, uh, and not existing, examples of uh, something um, that could be in the in this category would be like maybe um, maybe there's um, something um, uh, that you can sort of feel through and you don't have to see or rely on sight to use it um, or 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 touch uh, touch related stuff. Number six, um, I wish that there were more tools tools that help making make make stuff. So. Um, in here, uh, we have a seam ripper, which is used in sewing or other other yarn um, uh, related techniques uh, to either sort of cut cut a seam or cut uh, uh, threads in the places. And um, I, I'm sure that there are multiple ways to use this tool, the seam ripping continuity meter. I think that you can check like, okay, I have I have current here, or or you can try to find short short circuits with it. Um, but it's a great example. It is openly available, but it's not certified. So certify, certify. Um, number seven, and um, I want to I want to spend some time with this slide uh, because this is a tricky topic. I wish that there were um, projects that use techniques that are part of the traditional culture of some native people. Um, and here I have an example uh, uh, from the Sami people. I come from Finland. Sami are the native people of uh, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Um, but I wish that the, cert the person who certifies this project is part of that culture and tradition. I could not certify something like this because I don't know how the culture and the craft works. Um, but I wish that I could learn from from the sort of like the documentation and from the certification and uh, therefore enjoy and sort of get get more ideas into my own making. Same goes for the selling. Like um, I I could not uh, sell something like this, uh, and I wish that then the then the people who do sell stuff uh, are you know grown uh, in that culture and in that tradition. Of course. Okay, number eight. Uh, Jewelry, jewelry. So it was me who made uh, the very loud sound when I saw a beautiful earring on, on uh, some of the other presenter slides. Um, and um, I, I love jewelry uh, that has electronics, although I haven't yet seen that many uh, soft jewelry examples. So there are a lot of hard, hard ones that use metal and stuff like that. But uh, for example, soutache uh, would be a great technique to sort of embed um, whatever shiny and nice things um, into into the craft and make beautiful wearable items. Number nine, um, I I want to spend time in nature more, and um, this is this is also a tricky topic for me because I I, I spend my day on working with a laptop inside. Uh, and then I make electronics and I, I, I do my handicraft work inside. But I, I wish that there was something that would encourage us all, you know, enjoy the outdoors and spend more time in there. So um, one of my uh, most loved projects is this uh, sunscreen reminder hat. Uh, I have worn it now uh, for one summer, doing which I did not burn in the sun because I don't, I don't, I don't get a tan, I just burn. So um, something like this, maybe... Another example would be like if your project is solar po solar powered, you have to be in the sun for it to work, or something that if you come from a cooler climate, then um, produces heat so that you can stay longer outdoors or something. Number ten, um, <laughs> I wish that there were projects who uh, like contain uh, some custom made components. These happen to be buttons, but they could be um, any anything else. Um, there's lots of examples. On the, on the internet for, for like uh, 
inspiration. Okay, I'm running out of time. So in conclusion, uh, one more reason to certify your project um, is the freedom from social media companies, different uh, ways of control. So like feeder front front page algorithms, um, member walls or paywalls, um, changing terms of use. <laughs> and uh, there are many uh, types of e-textile items um, that could be could be made into existence and add to the the uh, diversity of the of the projects that we have, you know, in the world. Some of them, yeah, are offshore certified, and some of them are already in existing. But yeah, please go make some stuff. Thank you.